Our topic, the Internet's impact on Campaign 2008. It's no secret that the Internet plays a major role in presidential politics these days. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. According to the widely respected Pew Internet and American Life Project, 29% of all American adults got most of their campaign news from the Internet in 2004. This was up from 18% in 2000, and in 1996 it was only 4%. The breakthrough really came in 2004 when Pew found that 75 million Americans went online for political news and information uh, to discuss candidates and debate issues and actually to volunteer or to contribute money to the campaigns. Yeah, and Barb, this time around the Internet is bigger and even more powerful than ever with each presidential candidate trying to out-Internet the other. Yeah, isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah, well, joining us, uh, we're very happy to have to, to talk about all the technological revolution in politics today is Andrew Roche, and Andrew, co-founder of Tech... Uh, president.com I hope I got that right and maybe we should begin what is techpresident.com well techpresident.com keeps track of the presidential candidates and how they're using technology or how they're not using technology okay. how many MySpace friends they have how many Facebook friends they have how many YouTube views their videos have gotten and we also write on from both the Republican and Democratic side about the technologies that the different campaigns are using to do the outreach and to use the internet as an effective way to campaign. So how are they doing? I mean we saw you know Hillary's uh, soprano uh, you know video. Uh, video. Well 2008 as you were just describing is now going to be even more of a influencer in the political campaign. It's going to help to define the results to a large degree because not only are the candidates using the internet and more people using the internet to find out about them but voters now have many more tools to participate themselves uh -huh. voter generated content is going to have a precipitous effect on the political landscape it's not just the campaign's use of the internet but voters creating tools creating videos and talking among themselves in a way it's like the water cooler conversations or the conversations over the back fence or around the dining yeah. table around the home are now on steroids because these conversations are happening over the internet and so people are influencing the campaign haven't directly. The, haven't, the, haven't the campaigns also been trying to take advantage yeah. of exactly those tools not only to reach voters but also perhaps yeah, you know I, to talk about their yeah. uh, and I know Rudy Giuliani for example has been you know trying to s even sell things on the internet. Well sure I mean they are definitely using the internet as kind of their own private C-SPAN you know creating videos the Soprano video that you just described by Hillary and the other campaigns have used internet video to do outreach to go beyond the soundbite politics that we're used to but the dynamics still tend to be very much top-down they're used to sort of creating a message and delivering it through the internet it's almost like direct mail through technology now well, but how about Senator Obama? I mean, he's kind of being thought of as the social networking candidate. Well, he, he is one candidate whose campaign has actually They're used many, many of these tools in innovative ways. They've yeah. created, they've invited people to create their own blogs and to, to uh, submit videos so they can be used on the site. And they, they've recognized that this voter-to-voter -voter uh, contact is very important to their campaign. And as a matter of fact, by fostering that community of supporters, the byproduct is lots of money. 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 Which we noticed with the Obama campaign. Uh, I think, am yeah, I right, a about a third a, of, of their contributions actually. Online. Well, exactly. And the reason why that is is because the byproduct of good community building online is money. Mm -hmm. And so he has lots of small donors, and he can keep going back to them over and over now, again. Now, the political scientist in me worries that this is somehow unregulated, and we can get into a rumor mill, and we might get some odd things that are, can't be substantiated well, actually, being communicated. You know, and actually, just recently, we saw the the firefighters yeah, video um, with with Rudy Giuliani and so you know what's the impact of, of using the internet in, in that kind of well, way? Well you know, uh, you know po political free speech is part of our constitution <laughs> and whether it's attributable to a person or, or whether it's anonymous it's part of the, our political yeah. reality so the internet now allows people to speak their mind and they can send it to people to see without asking for the party's support or the candidate's support. Yeah. So what we saw swift boating in 2004 is also going to be accelerated and you're going to see supporting videos and also attacking videos created independently outside of the political system. Should we expect to see some regulation in the future? I don't think so. I think that this is pretty clearly free speech in, in, in the most direct what, way. What do you do about the people who aren't connected online and are they going to sort of get left well, behind actually in it's the funny, It's process? funny you mention that because a lot of people say that the internet is going to be good for reaching the people who are either online or younger people who know how to use the technology. But the reality of it is is that major media organizations, your organization, 
are using the internet to follow the campaigns and a lot of your stories are actually originating from what we're discovering on the internet so the internet is influencing and reaching people offline by affecting the major media players but as are well. But are they left out of the game, so to speak? In other words, they'll get the information, but are they going to lose on having their input? Well, uh, because, because they're not online. Uh, absolutely. In fact, one of the things that we talk about on Tech President is as asking the political candidates to come up with a policy to make sure that all Americans can participate in the 21st century information revolution because that we're falling behind. The country is actually uh, rated about 20th mm -hmm. in broadband access as compared to other countries. So it is an issue. But the fact that it remains that the internet's going to play a central role in this campaign and have a defining and you impact. You certainly front row seat to all that. And that's yeah. and that's why we started it. I definitely have a, a, a seat at the 50-yard line. Yep. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure.